Hello, welcome to Excel Highway. In today's video, I want to share with you a file I created for scheduling production through a multiple workstation uh, factory. Uh, this is very useful for um, production uh, environments where items have to go through a few working stations before they are ready for shipping. In this example, I'm going to use a wood factory that processes wood items like tables, chairs, things of that nature. And of course, you can fit this to your own business. It could be an assembly line, a packing um, warehouse, whatever. Uh, you, can, you can use that to schedule basically uh, all your uh, production. Let's go over all of the uh, sheets and hopefully this will be useful for you. Let's start with the gray sheets. These are the behind um, the, the, the backstage uh, worksheets. You don't really have to do anything here. If you click on the information mm -hmm. icon, you're going to see this pop-up message. Um, and as described, you don't have to do anything here. The VBA codes that work actually utilize uh, these sheets and you don't need to do anything and actually better not to touch anything. Same for here. This is going to show you the schedule. This may be useful for some people if they do want to dig into the actual uh, schedule one by line by line so they could use it. Again, I wouldn't touch anything because it can ruin the file. This sheet is the workstation sheet. This is where you set up basically your business type. This would be Let's say if you have uh, certain workstations that can be worked in parallel, so you can uh, aggregate them under one type. In this, in this example, sawing. So there's sawing, refining, and coloring. And I gave names. Let's say I have four sawing uh, machines, two refining machines, and two coloring units. This, of course, can be, let's say, a coloring room or, I don't know, whatever. This could be packing, whatever you want to call it. Um, you could have different types and different workstations. What's important is to make sure that you have the types and the order. So this is going to be the order that the items will be processed later on. So um, make sure that the order is correct. For each workstation, you define the capacity. And there are no units here. So it could be that here it's in units, here it's in, um, I don't know, in metric tons, and here it's in liters. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, you you uh, you change it how you see fit. You can work with it, and the processing time. This is in days, so the entire schedule is built on days, not hours, not minutes. In days, um, that is the accuracy level for this. Now, there's two columns here. One is called customer limitation. One is called item limitation. What they mean is, if a certain customer cannot use a certain um, station, you need to write their names here and separate with the uh, uh, a comma or a, I don't know a, a dot or whatever you want a semicolon whatever as long as you just separate the name of the customer and here in item limitation you can see I wrote an example now you can see that in my example the pine wood plank exists in both of the refining unit one and refining unit two this means that this item will not be processed in the refining state it will go through sawing and directly into coloring. So if you have items that will you want to skip a certain station, make sure that, or certain types are, you make sure that all of their um, stations are shown here. You also have this in the information, what I just described, so you can always read it later. So this is how you build your workstation, which is very important um, to do. The next sheet is the order sheet. Now, if you made changes uh, in the workstation or if you added or changed orders here, nothing will change until you click the Create Schedule button. Once you create the schedule, the Create Schedule button, it's going to work with those two sheets and basically build your schedule. Now, the order here also is important. It's going to schedule from the first row, number three, to the last row. So this will receive SAW unit one, two, three, four, if they need them. And I see again one, two, one, three, four. This is a, probably because of the due date. So this one is number three is completed on the fourth. This is on the fifth. So it's going to schedule it on the fifth. But you get the idea. So same for all the different stations. And you can see that 
the order sawing, refining, and coloring is based on this area here, and this is based on uh, this here. That's why I said it's important the order. If I add another one here, call it uh, packing, for example, you sh it should appear. I'm oh, sorry, I need to add also some sort of capacity, otherwise, it doesn't identify it. Packing one, let's say. Okay, now it should appear. And also in the orders, I will see it over here and it will schedule. Uh, once I click the create schedule, you're also going to see that it's going to schedule in the packing area. And I'll just click it in a second. So, what's important here is to update the planning start date. If uh, you want to change from November to December, um, you can do the first day of the month, the last day of the month, whatever. Um, and let's just for keep it here. Um, so for each line, you're also going to see these, this is information that you input, the customer name, item, quantity, and order. You can add columns. It won't hurt the, the code because it's searching for station. Search, look, look, searching for station to start inputting information. So as long as you don't touch this area, you're good to go. You can add columns here. You can write uh, priority. Uh, priority. You can add uh, sales rep. I don't know. Whatever you want, you can add. It's not going to change anything. Eventually, you have the start and end date. That's going to show you for a specific item, when does it start? And when is it going to end? So basically, the first, usually it's the station, but it could be other stations, but it's the first date being scheduled, the last date that is scheduled to end date. All right. Um, also, weekends are not included here. So if, if there's a weekend, it's going to jump uh, a couple of days or have the order run for more time. So let me show you. I'm going to click on Create Schedule now. You can see that it's processing. And eventually you get this message, schedule created. And we should see now that they added a packing area. So now it's a packing area and everything changed with the end date and everybody else is packing as well. So that's how it works. Now I've built this for up to five uh, workstations, okay? So up to five, if you have more, small modification needs to be done, but it can be done rather easily, so that's okay. The next stop, and of also here you have some information that basically tells you a little bit about what I talked about now. Okay, just make sure, most importantly, do not touch basically this area, right? And last but not least is the Gantt chart. So the Gantt chart, as you access it, it's going to be updated. and Basically, what it does, it's going to build the schedule, but from a perspective of a working station. So you have the type, the station name, and then it's going to show you what's going to be planned for production every day. Here you see that there are no working days uh, for Saturday and Sunday. So it's being processed for Friday and Monday, two days, but you know, calendar wise, it's four days. Then it's the next item, the next item, and so on. What's uh, convenient here is each, what you see here is basically the customer name and the item. Oh, sorry about that. So it's this combination. Now, other combinations can be built as well, a uh, small modification. Um, again, every time you go into the Gantt, it takes about two seconds to update. What you can see that each combination has a different color. So it's very easy to track all right, the Acme Furniture Oak Table, that's going to Sawing Unit 1, then it's going to Refining Unit 1, then it's going to Coloring Unit 1, and eventually it's going to the Packing Area. This needs to be updated. Um, and that's how you see very nicely um, how items are being uh, planned, and you can see that the weekends, there is nothing planned to be produced. Again, if your factory is working 24-7, this could also be adjusted rather easily with a small modification. Uh, this is built for one month. You can see that it's going to take us uh, up until the 1st of December. There's 31 days here, so that's what it's going to show. And, of course, this could also be built theoretically for two or three months. Uh, 
no real reason to keep it at one month because usually uh, people build schedules one month out. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You also have here this information that you can always click and, and read some. And I hope you uh, are interested in this file. If you are, it is available on my Patreon page and the link is in the description. Have a good one.